For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Benjamin Nolak and welcome to my channel. This video here is a recap of a recent day that I had on the water catching a bunch of big pre-spawn bass with my buddy Nathan. I'm going to link that video right here for you guys so you guys can go ahead and check it out. Uh, in this video I'm going to go over the gear, the techniques, and the patterns that we use to break down this early spring or pre-spawn um, season to go out and catch some big fish. And what I'm going to try to do is break it down in a way that explains what we did to find these fish so that way you guys can take these patterns and apply them to your home lakes. So with that said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to explain is the water temperature. I want to explain the conditions of the day. Throughout the day, the water was between 43 and 48 degrees. When we got out there, the wind was blowing. It was really overcast and it was keeping that water temp down. So we knew those fish were gonna be in a little bit deeper water. So understanding the pre-spawn pattern, what these fish are gonna to try to do, the bass are gonna to try to position on these long wind blown points, feeding up on bait fish, getting ready to spawn. So with the water between 43 and 48 degrees, we expected those fish to be pushed in a little bit deeper water near the spawning flats, near flats where there are gonna be a lot of bait fish roaming. And the key is finding healthy grass. If you can find healthy grass, you're gonna find bait fish. If you can find bait fish, you're gonna find bass. So that's what we were looking for. What we did is we ran back um, in one of the pockets and we found a point that had a lot of wind blowing in on it. But what was really key, it was right outside of a spawning flat and there was a ditch running into that spawning flat. What was happening was there was a flat that was about three to five foot that dropped off into a seven or eight foot ditch um, that fed back into the spawning flat. And those fish overnight, when that water's a little bit cooler, those fish will drop off into that spawning flat and that's where you'll be able to catch them. But when that sun comes up and starts to warm up the water, those fish will come out of that ditch, and they'll come up onto the shallower flat, feeding on those bait fish in the grass, on the structure and cover um, outside of that spawning flat. So that's what we started targeting. And the very first bass of the day that we caught came on this half ounce double Colorado bladed chartreuse spinnerbait. And what I was doing is I found that ditch and I was sitting on the edge of the ditch. So I was sitting on the shallow edge where it was five foot and I cast into the ditch and really slow rolled this, this spinnerbait. And what I was doing was allowing this bait to sink all the way to the bottom and just slow creeping it along the bottom of that ditch. The key there is that a lot of times the water's a little bit dirtier and the water's also colder so these bass don't want to move as fast. So by slow rolling a bait that has a lot of thump with these big blades, uh, it gives those fish an opportunity to track this bait down, chase it, and come and eat this bait. If I were reeling this bait really quick, there's a good possibility I would have missed that fish or never even knew that that fish was there. So the very first fish that we caught that day when the weather was really overcast and cloudy, there was a lot of wind, was this half ounce double Colorado bladed chartreuse spinner bait. Now the rod that I was throwing this on is a six foot nine, it's a medium heavy fast action rod and I was throwing it on a six four to one gear ratio reel. But what's kind of key and, and a thing that I think helped me catch that fish was throwing this on monofilament. This is 17 pound monofilament and what I really like is the fact that I'm not able to feel my bait, my bait very well when I'm fishing it on monofilament. So a lot of people will question that. Why do I not want to have feel of my spinner bait? The thing is, if I would have felt that fish bite, there's a good chance I would have pulled this away before he got a good hook in his mouth. By throwing it on a line with a lot of stretch, by throwing it on monofilament, that fish was able to take this bait in, eat the bait really well before I even felt him and set the hook. I think that was key, especially when those fish were kind of nipping at our baits or not eating it really well, was throwing it on monofilament. Now, only in the spring, only in the spring will I throw monofilament line for baits other than top water. Okay? Only in the spring when the water is really cold will I throw monofilament line for anything other than top water. And the only reason for that is because, like I said, I want those fish to be able to eat my bait really well and me not be able to feel it until that fish has basically taken it in and my rod starts to load up. So I was throwing it on 17 pound monofilament line um, and I think that was the key for me to get my first couple of bites. Another key on this spinnerbait is I am running a trailer hook. So after the first two fish I decided to add a trailer hook because I didn't want those fish short striking my hook and not getting it all the way in their mouth. By adding a trailer hook you add an opportunity 
for more fish to get your bait. One thing that bass are notorious for, especially in the spring, is short striking your blades or short striking your bait. And by adding this trailer hook, it gives you an opportunity to catch a couple extra fish. So this here is the bait that caught a couple of those first fish for us and really got us keyed in to that shallow flat pattern where we ended up catching a whole bunch more fish. As the sun kind of got up, as those fish started to move on top of the flat, onto those uh, stumps and boulders and a little bit of grass, we started having to change our bait profile. Um, as the fish got shallower, they got more active and they weren't looking for a bait that had as much vibration as this spinner bait was putting out with these big Colorado blades. And that's when Nathan really started to hammer those fish. Nathan was throwing a Dobbin 734, which is a seven foot three, uh, medium heavy power, moderate fast action rod. So the same properties that that mono has, that rod had. Um, it had a little bit more tip, which allowed those fish to get his bait really well and give him fighting power to get those fish to the boat without ripping the hook free. Very similarly, I was throwing a seven foot two. Uh, this is a medium heavy with a moderate fast tip for the same exact reason. I think it's a perfect rod to throw a chatter bait on um, because it gives you the backbone you need to rip this bait free of the grass and the cover, but at the same time, that moderate fast tip allows those fish to eat your bait without ripping it from them. The bait that Nathan was throwing was a 3 8 ounce Strike King Poison Vibrating Jig, and I'm gonna show you guys a picture right here of the exact bait that he caught his fish on. As you guys might be able to tell, there's a little bit of chartreuse on the bottom of that bait, and on his trailer he was adding some chartreuse, which I think helped that bait stand out in the water, which was a little bit dirtier from the rain and the runoff. Um, and that triggered a couple extra bites. And the bait that I was throwing was a Z-Man chatter bait with the Strike King Menace Grub trailer. Uh, both Nathan and I were throwing it on a six three to one reel, which keeps that bait slow um, and gives those fish a chance to chase that bait down. The only difference in our setups really being that Nathan was throwing 30 pound braid to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and I was just throwing it on straight 14 pound fluorocarbon. That braid does give him a little bit better feel of what his bait's doing in the water, but I just like throwing straight fluorocarbon so I don't have to tie a knot um, connecting my fluorocarbon to my braid. The key was not keeping our baits up in the water column by reeling it quickly, but rather we'd let our baits sink to the bottom. And after it sank to the bottom, we would just really slowly turn the handle on our reel. So this is exactly what it looked like. We'd super slowly turn the handle and all this bait would do is crawl along the bottom and this blade would thump back and forth. When this bait would hit a stump or hit a log down on the bottom, you'd feel your bait stop and rather than pop our bait free, we'd turn the handle and lift the rod tip. And as we did that, if the bait came free, we'd continue reeling. But if it didn't come free, if that bait felt mushy or soft, we'd set the hook and typically that's when the fish would bite. Um, typically those fish would bite when that bait deflected off of whatever cover was on the bottom and that's when we draw um, our bigger than average bites. So like I mentioned before though, all of our fish came out of the ditch running into a spawning pocket off the end of a point or on a big flat outside of a spawning pocket. Um, and that's really key. That's where these fish are gonna be pushed up this time of year. Uh, as that water starts to warm up, they'll get a little bit more active, but you're gonna look for those fish early mornings in the deeper water. For us, it was eight to nine feet. And then as the sun came up, we followed them a little bit shallower. They came out of that ditch, got onto the flat, and they were in that three to five foot range. So I hope you guys learned something from this video that you guys can take and apply to your own pre-spawn early spring bass fishing. And if you have any questions or comments about what we were doing, leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer them as thoroughly as possible. Also, if you haven't yet checked out that video, go over, check it out firsthand so you can see what we were doing to catch these fish. And by watching that video, you'll get a little bit better visualization of what we were doing to trigger those fish into biting. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please go down and give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comment section because what I'll do, if you guys enjoyed this style of video, I'll try to do something similar to this uh, after all of my successful fishing trips to give you guys some insight on what I was doing to help you guys catch fish. Also, add me on all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. Check out my links to my partners down below, Beast Coast Tungsten, um, Angler Labs, which is this tracker right here on this rod, Six Cents Lures, Lucky Tackle Box. All those partners are gonna be linked in the description below. And as always, take care, tight lines, God bless, pursue your passion. Get caught up staring at those city lights. 
Had some ugly days to get some pretty nights Cut some people off, dreams take a sacrifice Yeah, they wanna make it, but can never pay the price Get caught up staring at those city lights Had some ugly days to get some pretty nights Cut some people off, dreams take a sacrifice Yeah, they wanna make it, but can never pay the price